First two loves together. The art of teaching is the art of assisting discovery. Education doesn't just make us smarter, it makes us whole. Teaching kids to count is fine, but teaching them what counts is best. I am indebted to my father for living, but to my teacher for living well. A teacher affects eternity. He can never tell where his influence stops. I like a teacher who gives you something to take home to think about besides homework. I have learned silence from the talkative, toleration from the intolerant, and kindness from the unkind. Yet, strange, I am ungrateful to those teachers. A good teacher can inspire hope, ignite the imagination, and instill a love of learning. A teacher who is attempting to teach without inspiring the pupil with a desire to learn is hammering on cold iron. Good teachers know how to bring out the best in students. An investment in knowledge pays the best interest. Change is the end result of all true learning. Education is the passport to the future, for tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. The roots of education are bitter, but the fruit is sweet. The more that you read, the more things you will know. The more that you learn, the more places you'll go. Live as if you were to die tomorrow. Learn as if you were to live forever. The learning process continues until the day you die. Education is not the filling of a pail, but the lighting of a fire. Develop a passion for learning. If you do, you will never cease to grow. Education is not preparation for life. Education is life itself. Good evening, everybody. Could you please confirm if I'm audible? All right, thank you. Thank you all for registering and attending this one week national de level online faculty development program on outcome based education and essential AI tools for teachers. This is organized by the Internal Quality Assurance IQAC of Ramakrishna Mission Vivekananda Centenary College Autonomous, Rahara, Kolkata, in association with the Department of Mathematics, Chandri Charan Singh University, Beirut, and co hosted by IPSA Solutions Limited. We would like to welcome Dr. Suresh Nambudri, who is the Director of Aspire Technologies Pune, who will be again uh, today's resource person. And also, we would like to welcome all the FTP participants of today. A uh, few things about this FTP. This is a one week FTP program uh, with live timings from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. And this is actually our fifth day of FTP. Now, uh, the fee for the LMS access and processing of certificate is rupees 500. All the participants who are paid the processing fee will receive the LMS access, the video recording for all the dates, and provision to download your FTP completion certificate. The procedure for receiving the certificate will be informed to you. <clears throat> towards the end of the FTP. If any of you are yet to make the payment, please make the payment of rupees 500. To the account details, I will shortly put in the chat. If you are unable to attend any of the live sessions, they will be available in the LMS. We have shared the LMS access details through email to those who have shared the payment proof in WhatsApp till yesterday. Those who have shared the payment proof in WhatsApp today will receive the LMS access details uh, mail uh, later in the day or by tomorrow day. If you have any trouble in attending the WebEx online session, you can join our YouTube live session. I will put the link in the chat now. Uh, 
Now, my name is Sujin Jacob George. I'm working as Global Relations Manager with IPSR Solutions Limited, and I will be the event moderator. Now, uh, coming to our session today, to uh, our session will be on ChatGPT and AI tools. This will be again delivered by Dr. Suresh Number Three, who's the director of, of SPA Technologies. Pune. Over to you, sir. Thanks, Sujin, for the introduction and good evening to all. Uh, we had our session yesterday, and what we discussed yesterday was why OBE is required and what are the what are the necessity and what are the compelling reason of we as a country following OBE. That was the first session. Second, I have introduced you to various ways to use chat GPT for an exciting classroom. These are the two things we discussed yesterday. And today we are going to speak very important two more, two more uh, sections. They are very important for uh, OBE and it, they are very important for your career also. They are, first, it is about prompting or prompting methods or prompt engineering, whatever we call. Second, it is how to apply uh, this AI for our research. Because now, according to government policies, every teacher should be a researcher. So therefore, a teacher is being judged by his or her research publications. So it is important that we use AI for, for maximizing our potential for, for, for creating research and for, and for publishing high uh, um, high impact papers. So therefore, now let us first go for our session on prompting. So let us see uh, how many of our participants and uh, we should we wait a few more moments because already five minutes we are late. So, so let us start our session now. I am going to start uh, sharing my slide. This, as I, uh, as I told you yesterday, prompting means that is the way to communicate with uh, our chat GPT or BAD, or BAD, that is a generative AI. If we want to get something from this generative AI, uh, AI models, we need to ask. That process of asking, that is what prompting is. That, uh, that is what we call prompting. So how good we are in prompting, that much good we are going to get the responses. Now, let us see. You would have seen this particular image somewhere. That is from computer, all the garbage is coming out because it is very, it is well known in the IT industry that computers work on GIGO, garbage in, garbage out. In the case of chat GPT, it is 100 times 100 times um, true. Therefore, when we use chat GPT, we must understand quality of the questions decides the quality of the answers. If we want to get good answers, we have to ask good questions. Then second, we need to, we need to understand the skill and the ability to question the answers leads to knowledge generation. It is not it is not answering the questions. It is our ability to question the answers that is going to dis that is going to lead to knowledge, new knowledge generation. You must have seen this Prashna Upanishad. Prashna Upanishad, you would have definitely heard. This is number four hierarchy. This is among Upanishads. This is number fourth hierarchy. It is very important out of 108 Upanishads. Why it is important? Because in ancient Indian education system, 
that is the importance given to the skill and ability to ask questions as i was discussing earlier questions quality of the question decides the quality of the answer and our ability to question the answers that is going to lead to new generate new knowledge generation therefore our ancestors they gave uh, uh, big they gave uh, that type of an importance to, for, for the ability to ask questions if you see all over the world almost in the same time there were so much so much so much importance for asking questions see here if you go to prashna upanishad india plato's dialogues greece aristotle versus greece talmud it is in jewish tradition and then china these these are all the ways in all the modern all those places where education has grown well all those places one thing was common they encouraged asking questions you know that if we, when we go to a place and request people do you have any question how many people ask a question this is the, this is one of the important things we need to understand before we go for the chat gpt and prompting prashna upanishad second one it is vada or debate when we are in debate we are in the utmost of our preparation we are very we are very sharp in our mind we are too attentive that is the reason in viva voce examination that is the reason in viva voce examination we prepare in a very different way so ancient indian education system system strived because education was in the form of debates in the form of vada this is what exactly required in the case of chat gpt if you have to get to good information good, good good information if you want to extract really really unknown so far unknown information you must be doing vada with the chat gpt this is the ability what we are looking for this development of critical thinking skills enhancement of knowledge absorption and retention these are all benefits of when we are entering into vada so these are the our prashna upanishad and our ability to engage in a vada these are the two most important abilities which is which is required to develop uh, to extract the uh, uh, the the uh, most important information and data from chat gpt i will show you how it is and why it is now things basically we basically we we use these are the things we uh, these are the reasons why we use chat gpt because it can automate task it can give me advice it can write and debug code it can generate ideas and brainstorm it can create content and it can build websites and apps it definitely it can do charting it can analyze data generate data sets and create physical and create physical objects so in a nutshell asking the right question is the main way main way to unleash ai's potential asking the right question now let us this i am going to tell you various methods you can use so that you are going to get better answers from chat gpt so today if you are if you are not heard uh, about prompting or if you are not tried various types of prompting today is the first day of the rest of your life because to because prompting is the literacy of the future like you have learned a b c d so many years ago today you are going to learn the prompting prompting is the literacy for the future so i am going to speak about various types of prompting and how to use them and you are going to get benefited by that because you are going to get superior results from chat gpt or bard whichever llm you use so let me start first by by what is prompt what is prompt engineering and a magic prompt formula i am going to explain and let me tell you these are the these are all uh, prompts which we uh, majority of them majority of them we have so far about 27 types of prompts and 
almost half of them are developed by us because we have tried various pro various ways to use chat gpt and in that during that time we could we could develop some of the prompts of our own but here i am going to show you these prompts in such a way that you will you are going to get a superior results my request is that while watching this please make a note and if you have any doubt about this you have my phone number you can always ask me how to use this okay now let me go next next this is the first thing what is a prompt a prompt is something we are we are persuading a reluctant person to do something this is what the most appropriate appropriate definition for a prompt we are persuading somebody who was reluctantly sitting there here chat gpt was sitting reluctantly we are persuading chat gpt to do something this is we need to understand only that much because we are not going to write an examination on the definition of what is prompt so now come to that one what is prompt engineering prompt engineering is means you are applying control on that prompt you are tweaking it in such a way that you get the desired result so that is what the prompt that is what the prompting so that to, to make the chat gpts or llms capabilities to maximize the capabilities you use you uh, modify the prompts and you use it to so so that you get the maximum efficiency we will go see these things later in this program this see what you are seen here is the magic prompt formula means every prompt every prompt if you are following this particular structure the result to what you get will be much superior please remember this a a prompt a well written prompt will have this particular structure there will be modification from this prompt based on the context based on the task i will explain those things later but time being please see this thing this is what the magic prompt formula that is there is a context there is a task there is an instruction and example and data i will show you this example prompt here context task instruction and example data i will write a context act as a professor of stanford university who mentored many startup companies from ideation to public issue this is a context write a motivation email to the students of a tier 2 engineering college in india about starting up their own venture instead of searching for a lowly paid no value added jobs this is a task instruction make the email really inspiring and must resonate with an age group of 21 to 20, 21 or 22 years focus a lot on the core branches of engineering like mechanical electrical electronics mining etc this is what the instruction this much is enough to make a prompt make a prompt but if you add an example i will tell you those things later yeah, later in this particular session include some examples of a successful indian entrepreneurs who despite financial struggle built excellent companies so this is a structure of a prompt if we don't use properly prompt then we are going to enter into difficulties after making some few prompts i will explain to you why we need to we need to go for good prompts if somebody tells you that this is what i got from chat gpt and tell that that is an official they received it from chat gpt please don't believe them the reason is like any other process there is a process for chat gpt also input process output means you can give an input and you can tell a process and you can get an output that means you can decide the way in which you want to give input what input you want to give you can decide what should be the process chat gpt should be doing you can tell chat gpt what to do how to do then you can tell chat gpt what type of a format you require as an output you can tell chat gpt what 
type of things you want to get an output. That means when you are interacting with the chat GPT, you have got full control on input, output, and input, process, and output. Since you have got control on, on these things, chat GPT can be tweaked. It can be tuned in 1 million ways. So there is nothing that you get a chat GPT only one answer. Even if you give the same prompt to chat GPT at the same place in the same computer, you can get a different results. Therefore, therefore, there is nothing to say that this is what I got from chat GPT. Because, because whatever he or she received, that only reflects what is the type of prompt given by that person. If he or she says that this is what I got, it is not a good, it is not a good response from chat GPT. Just to believe that that person doesn't know how to prompt or that person doesn't know how to ask from chat GPT. Now, for example, see here. Uh, uh, now, now, for this particular slide, forget about input and uh, process. Let us think only about, only about output. You can have formal or informal tone in the output. Means even you can give a scientific, even you can give a scientific uh, inquiry and you can tell chat GPT that give an output in an informal way, including some jokes. Whether it is quantum computing or whether it is thermodynamics or fluid mechanics, chat GPT can make a joke out of that in the output. So because you can ask for that. Similarly, complexity of information, the same quantum computing, you can tell ChatGPT to write in a way a seventh standard girl can understand. ChatGPT will do that. So these are these are the type of output tweaking you can do. Length of response. You can tell Stephen Covey's Seven Habits book that is about 250, 260 pages, pages, write in two pages and give. It will do that. Similarly, you can tell you, you can tell something, uh, you, you can tell something to modify. even it will make means you can tell chat gpt that i am i am giving you one two paragraph text you make it into three pages and give chat gpt will understand the insight of this like a ballooning it will expand it will put so much of new information and give it to you and then you can have it a general specific prompt emotion or sentiment factual factual versus creative output bullet or tabular for, for output, JSON output. You know that JSON output that you can carry with the formatting uh, to, some other, uh, to some other application. These are all the ways in which, these are some of the ways in which you can get an output from a output from chat GPT. So please understand if somebody says, I got this from chat GPT, don't believe because you have got various, various ways to control input, process and output. Now let us go to the next stage. We are going to speak more detail and many interesting things to come. Now, <clears throat> please understand this particular thing. From this moment onwards, you have to use a prompt on ChatGPT only in this way. ChatGPT, you can give ChatGPT a role or a persona. Persona means you know that it is something like a mask. You are giving a you are giving a character to ChatGPT. Means you can tell ChatGPT you are a thief. From that moment, ChatGPT will think that ChatGPT is a thief. You can tell ChatGPT you are a you are police, and ChatGPT will believe from that moment that he or she is police. So similarly, when you give the give a role for ChatGPT before asking question, it will become lot of lot of efficiency and the response what you get will be more effective so therefore you can tell that you can tell chat gpt that act as a doctor you can tell chat gpt act as act as a student leader facing difficulty in writing examination means it is chat gpt will take as its role similarly similarly Act as a child who is crying. Chat GPT will become that. Therefore, you must give, you must give 
a role before you ask anything to chat gpt so if you want to ask ask some education related question you can always tell tell chat gpt act as a veteran uh, academician then you tell what is your what is you what you require from that chat gpt is going to give uh, to act like that and to give you the right response therefore this is what we want to discuss this is what role or persona prompt from next time you have to every time when you go and use chat gpt give chat gpt a role now this is the next next prompt style this everyone to look at this screen because it is going to save not only days weeks it is going to save your heart also let us think step by step or chain of thought prompts let us think step by step is very very important very very important prompt uh, i will tell you where it is used suppose you have a foreign textbook and on the back side there are tough there are tough questions you you have only a answer or you do not have an answer itself you just to copy that particular question put on and copy it on chat gpt and tell chat gpt let us think step by step this difficult problem chat gpt will break down into step by step and explain to you why and what it is similarly if there is a concept you do not understand well copy it and put it on chat gpt and tell let us think step by step chat gpt will go through this it will break it down it will explain to you step one by one step by step so now onwards there is nothing which is complicated there is nothing that is ununderstandable so there is nothing that is difficult because everything can be solved with this one particular prompt that is let us think step by step let us go to one now zero one and few short prompts don't get don't get uh, worried by seeing these big terminologies because these are all coming from this machine learning that is a back side of uh, of our generative ai but i will explain to you this in a very very simple way chat gpt has got a peculiar character if you tell chat gpt you ask a question to chat gpt then tell an example answer to chat gpt then chat gpt will catch on that example answer it will start behaving in the same way for example i am going to ask chat gpt which city is the capital of maharashtra that is a question to chat gpt then in the bracket i write example tiruvannamalai is the capital city of kerala now chat gpt knows very well that what i am expecting from that question chat gpt will immediately say mumbai in the same way you can use this in your own domain i am telling examples from neutral domains because everyone can understand and as as bloom stacks on me third level you can always apply this principle in some other place therefore please see this please see please see another example if you can give if you can give uh, two examples or three examples how much ever you have that much it is better when you ask chat gpt a question because chat gpt will be very clear in what way what is our expectation from chat gpt it will it will be very clear what type of answer it has to give now now let me tell you another example for example if i am telling chat gpt i give chat gpt example two recipes of my liking that is recipe 1 recipe 2 then i can tell chat gpt then i can tell chat gpt you make a you make a uh, recipe for chicken salad for me and now let me show you that exactly on uh, on chat gpt
I am going to chat GPT. I am writing it here. See, create a recipe for a chicken salad. That is what my requirement. I am giving example one, example two. And uh, I have briefly given what is the, what is a recipe. Then I go for send a message. From my two favorite recipes, chat GPT will understand what is my requirement, what is my taste. It will take the insights from these two and then it will create a separate, it will create a separate chicken salad or recipe for me. Now, we are coming to interaction prompts. Many people believe that chat GPT is only like you Google, give a question and get an answer. They forget or they do not understand that chat GPT has got a very rare ability for, for interaction. These are all coming with the basic root because people think the chat GPT is exactly like Google. They forget the fact that from Google we get to search results, but from chat GPT we are getting an answer. There is a big difference between search results and answer. Search result means chat, Google is throwing so much information on us. You go and you search and you find uh, find answer on your own way. But in the case of chat, but in the case of uh, chat GPT, chat GPT is understanding our requirement using the insight and it is giving an answer to I. It is giving an answer to us. Even chat GPT will change the answers if we tell chat GPT that this is not the type of answer I am expecting from you. Or if we are pointing out some mistake in that answer, chat GPT will apologize, chat GPT will go back, it will modify and correct the answer and give it to us. This is a major difference between these, these two, chat GPT, these two, Google and chat GPT. So, um, but one more interesting point I wanted to tell you, this Google is existing here for more than 24 years now. Every year Google publishes one document and a video saying that how to search Google. Every year Google publishes, Google publishes documents saying how to search Google. But I have not seen yet anyone who has gone to that, that the document. I am stressing a lot here. The reason is whatever happened with Google, it should not happen with ChatGPT. The reason is ChatGPT is, Chat GPT, uh, is, is going to stay and it is something like a godsend when we are saying the type of the facilities we get, how this life has become easier and uh, how it is useful for teachers and researchers. So we should not take this uh, chat GPT for granted. We have to understand how to make the best use of it. For that purpose, we should know how to do the how to do prompting. Only with the prompting we can get the maximum benefit of chat GPT. So in now I am taking to interaction prompt. Just to see, I am going to show you some of the example. First, let us see how to use chart GPT for a salt analysis. I, I am telling you salt analysis in a chemistry lab. Salt analysis in a chemistry lab. Go to chart GPT. Now, please read this prompt. Act as a chemistry lab instructor have to perform a salt analysis. I am given with a substance whose description is given below. Please guide me how to do the salt analysis till the end. That means guide me till I identify the salt. Only provide one step at a time. The description of the substance, a white powder. Now I am going to click this. Let us see how the chat GPT is going to help me with the salt analysis. See what chat GPT has written. Great. Let us start the salt analysis for your, for your white powder sample. 
the first step is identifying an unknown salt is to perform a preliminary examination. This includes physical observation and simple tests that don't require any reagents. You are already, you have already noted that, that the substance is a white powder. Now let us do the following. Physical observation, not any distinct orders, check if the substance is crystalline or amorphous. Heat test, heat a small amount of the substance uh, heat a small amount of the substance in a dry test tube and observe any changes like melting, sublimation or release of gases. Please perform these steps and share your observation. Now ChatGPT is telling me, you do these things and inform me, inform me what is the result. Similarly, if I can do this, I can put the result. Then ChatGPT will tell me what to do next. In this way, actually, we have conducted this particular salt analysis in the lab with eight or ten steps. ChatGPT will take us to the end to identifying the salt. This is one of the big powerful thing of ChatGPT. Just imagine it is doing that interaction. Now let us see. Now let us see another interesting thing of ChatGPT. Now I am going to create an. I am going to create an interactive quiz with ChatGPT. Even you can conduct a YWC examination with ChatGPT. Create an interactive quiz on the given topic with the 10 questions. Ask me a multiple choice question and I will respond. If I get it wrong, please give me a hint. If I am wrong again, provide me with a correct answer and an explanation. Then provide me with a new question. In the end, display my score or out of 10 topic. Now let us let me change this. And this is an engineering subject. I will write uh, that uh, economics uh, of business. But uh, put a subject. Now let us see. It is going to create interactive quiz. If I am making mistake, it will give me a hint. See. What is the term for the cost of the next best alternative foregone when making a decision? Sunk cost, opportunity cost, marginal cost, fixed cost. I will give a wrong answer so that you will see how, how charge GPT will do. I am putting D. See, that is not cut. Here is a hint. Think about the cost associated with the benefits you give up by choosing one option over another. Would you like to try again? I will tell, yes, I will put A. Yeah. It is saying, once again, now it is saying like that, not quiet. The correct answer is opportunity cost. It has given me a hint. Once again, I made a mistake. And now it has come to the second. Similarly, you can put you can put various interactive questions. It is based on Bloom's taxonomy. I will tell you an example. I can make an interactive quiz in such a way that I give a subject to chat GPT. You ask, you ask 10, you ask 10 questions and ask one by one. The first two questions should be from the Bloom's remembering Bloom's remembering. If I am right, then you if I am right, you you ask me a question from Bloom's um, Bloom's co comprehension. In this way, you can tell different different uh, thing. And if I am making a mistake, please keep uh, please remain at remembering and ask me ask me another question from remembering. And after completing ten questions, give one mark for question from remembering, two marks from question from question from comprehension, third question from, uh, uh, and three marks from question from apply. In that way, you can actually program this chart GPT. When I say that you can program the chart GPT, one very important thing we need to understand now, even the language teachers can use IT because what we require is only language, not the software code. As I was telling you yesterday, yeah, that whichever be your discipline, whether you hate coding or not, whether you love coding or not, you can use it, or you can use verbs, you can use verbal text for writing code. You can get similar results like that. Now let us go back to prompt, uh, prompting, prompt engineering. 
let me show you another example in the same thing uh, for example uh, i am i am going to show you how chat gpt can work as a uh, work as a moderator in a brainstorming session see here we know the role of a moderator in a brainstorming session that person should be neutral that person should be understanding that should person should be able to validate the arguments made by each and each and uh, every member you can have a five people or seven people sitting there and do the do do the brainstorming and let the chat gpt as the moderator chat gpt has got tremendous ability to validate each and every argument chat gpt is not going to accept uh, accept any suggestion given by this by the by the members of the participants of the brainstorming session therefore chat gpt will do that do that moderating very well now let's see this um, see as any other moderator chat gpt is a setting condition condition and chat gpt is saying that you have to do this 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 and then say that would you like to uh, would you like to begin by suggesting a potential strategy or, or so that one person can start start giving the uh, start giving his or her idea and from there chat gpt is going to do the moderating of the thing now let us go to the next prompt that is let us think about this it is very similar to uh, the, let us think about this prompt let us think about prompt is very interesting means you can tell chat gpt see i want to make a speech about the future of my country let us think about this i have a dream you know that one this i have a dream is a very famous speech by dr martin luther king you just write like this chat gpt is going to write a very good speech about our country now let me show you that example i, I am going to write this as an example i go here See, I gave only this information. That is, I want you to write a speech about the future of my country. Let us think about this. I have a dream. Like, let us think step by step. Let us think about this is a, is a major terminology to be used in chat GPT. Now, this is another very important thing you can use. It is self-consistency prompt. What is self-consistency? You can tell ChatGPT to write something inconsistent with something else. That means if you received a document from university or from UGC or from AICT and you want to make a speech, a speech that is consistent with this particular document, you can upload that particular document and you can tell ChatGPT to write a speech 
that is consistent with that particular document. Or you can copy and paste that one on ChatGPT, and you can tell you write a speech inconsistent with that document. So the ChatGPT will make sure that the document what you have what you have uh, uploaded or the document or the text what you have pasted on ChatGPT, your do your writing will be inconsistent with that particular document. This is a very important thing that is knowledge generation prompt. Knowledge generation prompt. Day before yesterday, I read a document, read a document that is by Gartner. Gartner document says that by 2025, 30 percentage of new invention in material, pharmaceutical, electronics, etc. will be with knowledge generation made possible with the generative AI. Knowledge generation in the sense we must understand chat GPT type of LLMs have access to more than a more than 100 billion pages of text on uh, on this earth. This particular text, we know that these were not accessible to us. And these type of pages are accessible exactly with like question answer way accessible to us by prompting. With this prompting, we can go and search things unknown to us. It is all like ask, making a prompt and asking the question. Therefore, it is very, very important that one should understand how to how to do the prompting. Now let me see, let me tell you what are all the things if we do not know prompting, what will actually happen? Our inefficient information retrieval without effective prompting skills, anyone will struggle to extract relevant and precise information from AI. It will lead to one thing you lose time second thing is that it will be an inefficient operation and you will miss the opportunity that is why inefficient information retrieval second thing is misinterpretation of ai responses if if we are having poorly constructed prompts it can lead to ambiguous or misleading ai responses therefore we can we tell that this is what i got from chat gpt that is not true. It is actually because of wrong prompting. Third thing is reduced productivity, as we have discussed earlier. Then, fourth point, why prompting is, is important or what is the struggle we will face if you do not do prompting? It is over-reliance on default responses. You know, ChatGPT has got many default responses. If you are going to ask some very silly question or a simple question, ChatGPT will throw a default question, uh, default answer at you and ChatGPT will keep quiet. When you start fighting with the ChatGPT, this is not the type of the answers I am expecting. I am expecting some expert level of level of answers. When you start fighting with the ChatGPT, ChatGPT will get up and it will rise to the occasion. Therefore, you won't, chat GPT won't dare to give default responses to you. Then, if you don't use prompting, you will miss many innovation opportunities. Because when you use prompts, you when you use effective with sharp prompts, chat GPT will dig up innovative and very, very new, interesting information. Then, if without the prompting, there's a very big data analysis limitation. You know, one of the biggest power of ChatGPT is a data analysis. Now on ChatGPT 4, sometimes for data analysis is read, readily given to us. That is the reason now this now the now the courses like business intelligence, data analysis are not actually becoming irrelevant. Because you can tell ChatGPT, add some CSV, upload some CSV file, JSON file, and or you can upload data set, and you can ask ChatGPT anything what you want. It is going to create, it is going to develop all this, all these insights from this data, and it is going to present to you in whichever way you want. That is a that is a reason prompting is so crucial when you need to do data analysis. Then 
communication gap uh, then there will be communication gap if you are not using prompting there you will lag behind in technological adaptation therefore with all this reason prompting is the literacy of the future and you must be able to prompt if you are planning to get any any result which is above uh, above remembering and comprehension on bloom's taxonomy so this is what knowledge generation prompt is uh, and i will show you one example here it is a new knowledge uh, let me see this one i show a very very simple example here it is a knowledge generation in the sense it was not existing earlier i am writing generate a new and accurate information about benefits of air pollution we know that there are there are no benefit of air pollution but there are chances you go and search on google and you will see that nowhere such an information is given benefits of air pollution it says air pollution's benefit increased awareness and action advancement in technology policy development and environment protection and health research and education economic opportunities these are all the benefits of air pollution now let me show you another it is knowledge integration prompt what is knowledge integration prompt and how it is important see on chat gpt 4 on chat gpt you can upload many pdfs you can upload see pdf number 1 pdf 2 pdf 3 pdf 4 pdf 5 pdf 6 you can tell chat gpt extract the insights from pdf 1 blend with the insight of pdf 3 and give me on one page paper <coughs> in this way you are integrating knowledge you can tell one concept you can tell another concept you can tell chat gpt to integrate this concept and show to me chat gpt will do that earlier what is known to us is only merging of text merging of text means here there is a text to one here there is a text to text to one after that uh, 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 that uh, after text to one they will write text to this is the only way it is done but now the situation is very different we have got a technology that can develop that take the insight out of this so these are all the main main type of prompts prompts you can get this prompt example from lms and you uh, the lms there there are notes and there there are prompts you can get it there so that now let me uh, let me conclude this this prompting session here now let us go for another important section that is how to use uh, uh, generative ai for research please remember this you have the list of prompts you prompt uh, this notes about prompt engineering that is on lms you can use it and uh, you can try it and uh, you can now since you got the fundamentals of this even uh, you even you can make your own prompts and uh, in case you have got any doubt about this please let me know now with uh, this because we have got a less time with us we have to go fast now only one hour is left let me go for how to use chat gpt for research see i know that 99 percentage of participants sitting here they they must have gone through the process called 
called research or they are research guides or they are research scholars or they are planning to go for research therefore this artificial intelligence for high impact research is very important and very apt this is a very important part even when we look from the uh, obe that is outcome based education our education system believes that when a teacher gets a phd that person has be, that teacher has become most become most capable person to deliver and inspire students because he or she is supposed to be knowledgeable therefore it is important we need to meet that expectation so what is that uh, so what way we can use ai for high impact research you know that a researcher who is in the beginning is in this particular condition there is a fire on the leg the person is totally confused and with and with questions and how so much of explanatory thing and the time is running so now let's now when he or she ask what are the things they will get from the society people will say that you use ai and these are all the ai tools you can take ai for searching literature you can take a use ai for literature review you can use ai for content generation you can use ai for chat summaries or paraphrase you can use ai for data analysis you can use ai for grammar check you can use ai for uh, for podcast or reference manager etc etc this is what people say when you are saying like that i am a researcher i want to use ai that is the saddest part actually that is just a little 5 percentage of ai's ai's capability where is that 95 percentage of ai's capability how you can use ai for your research to the to the maximum this is what we are going to discuss here it is not that it is not that a researcher can do literature review researcher can do summarizing researcher can do paraphrasing that is this to 5 percentage of the capability ai has got ai's capability is 1000 times bigger and ai can a researcher can use ai in a very different way let me tell you some of the important things important expectations from me from ai first and foremost thing is that instant ideation expansion if i have got an idea spark AI can help me to expand my idea instantly. AI can do the validation of my ideas. AI can do the AI can do uh, do the validation of my research idea within few seconds. AI can help me to help me to improve. I am going to show those things. Uh, those things in this particular session later so important thing is ai's job doesn't do doesn't complete with that five percentage please ask for more you have to use ai to the full extent that means ai should be there with you from the starting of your research till you complete your complete your viva voc examination ai should be there with you this is what we are going to speak about here now let me go for uninterrupted ai can give us uninterrupted research flow ai will make sure that we are not getting stuck anywhere ai will make sure that it is not necessary for small small things we have to knock the doors of our guide ai will make sure that we get the required answers at every stage of our research that is what the power of ai now let us go to the third one that is critical thinking amplification oh, okay now there are certain questions in the chat i am going to respond to all the questions by the by the end of this 
and if i am not able to answer anything you can always call me you have my phone number now in this flow let me show these things because if i don't show this thing now you will not be able to see this because such things are not there on internet nobody is going to speak to you regarding this how extensively ai can help a researcher that is what we are speaking here the point number 3 critical thinking amplification see everyone has got certain level of critical thinking and chat gpt can amplify that means what i say is like this it can it can augment your thinking that is the main use of generative ai whatever way whatever way you think chat gpt can augment your thinking now for fourth one is time efficiency boost Fifth one is horizon broadening. You may start a research with something what was available to you, or somebody's recommendation, or what you get. But ChatGPT can help you to to broaden your horizon, make your make your research or publication a celebration. That can happen. Now the sixth one is innovation catalyst. When we use <coughs> when you use ai in your research it is very very natural that you will enter into situation where you will end up become the owner of an innovation if you use it if you are if you are careful then motivation multiplier there are many many things like this you will get i will show you those things later now let us go ahead <coughs> this is an interesting thing which uh, i am sure many people will be looking for i am telling you 12 reasons why generative ai doesn't lead to plagiarism when i speak to the non people in korea china japan singapore america everyone knows that they that it is possible to use chat gpt to create research without plagiarism only in india many people they come that yeah we have got very bad opinion about chat gpt because of plagiarism please note that our we should not lose our opportunity so that chat gpt can give give information chat gpt can be used to, to create very good research without plagiarism i am going to tell you those 12 reason 12 ways to do it here <laughs> when you are getting an output with a good prompt ultimately what you are getting is an original generation the output what you receive from chat gpt you put it into google with two put to with quotes and you go for a very tight search you will see that there is nothing equivalent like this that means you are giving a very calculated sharp prompt you are telling chat gpt what you are expecting you are telling chat gpt what type of output you want then you are getting such an output from chat gpt it is 100% correct that it's an original generation it is an original generation it is not copied from anywhere therefore you need not worry about plagiarism at all second is user input the quality and specificity of a gen of the generated text the quality and specificity of the generated text often depend on the user skill in crafting prompt which adds an element of originality and creativity to the output third we must understand that chat gpt is a tool it is not a source like a pen like a painting brush like a chisel like a hammer chat gpt is a tool it is not a source so we are using this tool to get information so therefore the, the, therefore no question of no question of a plagiarism here there is no claim of authorship and there is no no issue of co copyright you must be knowing that 
Three weeks ago, ChatGPT's company publicly said, if anybody facing a copyright issue with the ChatGPT, the ChatGPT's output, ChatGPT's company will come and fight for us. We need not fight our case. ChatGPT will fight the case. I am working on this ChatGPT for the last nine months. And I, uh, almost every time I searched for any plagiarism, I never felt it. These are the key things. Now, uh, now let me go ahead with this. Okay, before I go further, I will, uh, I will answer some of the questions here because I feel that is important. Are you going to take questions, sir? There's some yeah, questions. yeah. Because we, are, because we are going to going to go into another section. So let me uh, let me answer these questions. Okay. Uh, there is a question from uh, Jayendra Jathav, sir. Can we use ChatGPT for analysis of any specific data set? Yes, that is one of the most important, powerful feature of ChatGPT. On ChatGPT four. You can go to left side, you can go to explore, there you will get a data, chat GPT is on data set, there you can give, see that pin emblem, you can upload CSV files, you can upload data set, you can upload JSON file, and you can do the analysis. Then, second question is from uh, Madam, Madam Archana Mishra, AI text can be identified by plagiarism checker, sir, isn't it? Yes, Madam. The thing is like this. Please listen to me very carefully, Archana Mishra, madam. Uh, there is a difference between AI-generated text and plagiarism. When, when Microsoft says that on Microsoft Word, they are embedding chat GPT. When Google says that on Gmail, they are embedding, chat, embedding Google Bad or that Gemini. When Microsoft says on Excel, Excel is going to come with the come with the AI. Then AI generated text is going to be everywhere. So therefore, AI generated text is not plagiarism. AI generated text is something like a text coming out of a data, uh, out of a typewriter, text coming out of a out of a word processor. It is not plagiarism. Yeah, because see, my mother tongue is not English. So when I write something of my own, in the end, I will put it on chat GPT and check for any grammar mistake or usage mistake. And whatever suggestions given by chat GPT, when I incorporate, when you take it and see a AI checker, it will say, it will say it is, it is AI generated. So, the, so therefore, there is a line. AI generation is not plagiarism. I hope you, I hope you understood. Then, um, for clarifying this a little further, we need to understand. We this is a transition phase. Many people they have not studied a generative AI. They have not ventured into this, and they started telling their own opinions without knowing. They do not know the difference between AI-generated text and plagiarism. Another point is that I spoke to a, a particular publisher last week in USA. He was telling that they are putting this condition, don't give AI-generated text, because after this introduction of ChatGPT and BARD, those people are bombarded with tens of thousands of papers. Everything is written just to, just to copy it from generative AI. Therefore, they are putting a condition like this. But what you have to do, I will tell you in the 
in the process of this particular session what to do when you are you going to use chat gpt for chat gpt for doing research now there is a question from jos mj sir sir i heard that plagiarism checking software like return it in can predict the ai percentage document yes it is true they may they may say that it is coming from ai but that is not plagiarism now franklin c jos sir question one is it possible to get the reference material example textbook research article etc being used by chat gpt for preparing the question Question two: Whether the ChatGPT gives results in local languages. Question three: Who owns the copyright for the content generated by ChatGPT? Okay, I will answer these questions one by one. Q one: Is it possible to get the reference material? See. Before going further on this, please listen to me. ChatGPT has got three constraints. Three constraints for gathering information. First constraint is a paywall. Means which are all the places which is which is uh, which is logged with a payment? ChatGPT doesn't enter there, so ChatGPT doesn't have access to any papers, any books which was beyond which was behind the pay pay uh, wall, like PubMed, like Nature Spinger. All these places ChatGPT doesn't go. Therefore, ChatGPT doesn't get an access there. But ChatGPT can get access to the abstract of those in the public domain. ChatGPT can get access to the reviews and opinions about those papers in public domain. Therefore, ChatGPT can tell you about the existence of such a paper if you are prompting properly and if you are able to get that correct point from ChatGPT. That will be that is far far better than better than getting hundreds of uh, papers for your literature review. You will go mad with that. So here you will get a pinpointed name of a paper. That paper you can you can go and find in some other way. So first I was telling about ChatGPT's limitation. That is a paywall. Second is a firewall. ChatGPT doesn't have access to our Gmail. ChatGPT doesn't have access to many of the documents which were behind a firewall. So therefore you can't expect or we can't expect anything from that. There is another third. There is a third category. That's a legal firewall. In the sense, for for example, New York Times, they told ChatGPT, "Don't scroll, don't crawl our databases, our websites." Even though New York Times gives information free for to a certain extent, they are saying like that. Let people read free from our own site, not from ChatGPT. So therefore, many there are many newspapers and magazines, even though they are in public domain. ChatGPT doesn't have an access there. So therefore, these are the constraints in which ChatGPT works. So when we are asking for references, etc., ChatGPT can give this type of information. But in the end, ultimately, when we are publishing something on in our own name. The onus, that is the responsibility of that finding the real reason is on us. It is not on anybody else. It is like when I am looking for a reference text in some of the papers when I go and say some 30 percentage of the references, they are not there, not existing. I go to Google Scholar, I go everywhere and say such papers are not existing. Therefore, such an incident can happen even with the chat GPT. Above all, we need to understand ChatGPT is just a one-year-old child, one-year-old child, and the technology is improving almost every week. So we have, we should have a resolve. This is a child, and we are going to grow with that child. We can stand and criticize. We can say that that is not there. This is not there. But let us see that what is the potential. What of that particular technology and what it is the it is a promising thing. Therefore, our we should take a take a decision that we are going to grow with that child. We are not going to criticize and kill that child. So whatever is possible with that, let us do that one. 
now at present this is the these are the constraints this chat gpt type of llm space therefore we may get a textbooks research article etc but as a sincere researcher means research is an investigation it is something like a sherlock holmes detective investigation we have to get hints we have to get um, get some of the keywords from all these places and we can do another type of search also i think franklin c joseph's first question is answered in this uh, in this way second question from the sir is whether the chat gpt give research in local languages see if it is going if you are asking for answers in local language is one thing second you can tell chat gpt to translate it and give to the give, give to uh, your the local language i don't understand which is that exact question but i will answer for both uh, if you are asking for something which is originally from a local language their chances are very limited because i tried to do some of the research in malayalam literature i got little i got only very little i am not happy with that but at the same time i can give anything to chat gpt even the toughest old english even from the even from the oldest bible i can put i can tell chat gpt to translate it to malayalam it gives so so the, therefore that is possible and question 3 who owns the copyright for the content generated by chat gpt that is owned by franklin c jose sir because he is using his ingenuity to ask a question and he is getting it from chat gpt so he owns the copyright nobody else now there is a question from dr t devi can we find innovative design patent from chat gpt tool by only giving the design oh this question can we find innovative design patent from chat gpt tool by only giving the design this i have not tried uh, not tried but it is worth the trying means on chat gpt 4 you can upload an image then you can tell chat gpt is there any design patent issued to such a drawing that one because i have not tried yet i cannot answer that but my request is you please try tomorrow or something i also would like to try but first i have to find an find a find a design and then i have to do this now there is uh, there is response from achana mishra madam thanks a lot for explaining sir but would journals have any objection on it see journals have have objection on it it is all depends upon which side of the fence this particular journal journals lie if it is see if you are getting the abstract from chat gpt and you are going and searching for that paper by paying so the so the journals may not have any objection at all because you are getting to know about the existence of that paper through chat gpt that means the chat gpt is doing an advertisement for that paper publisher they will not be there will not be any problem for them now there is another question from sukanda sarkar steam turbine and fluid machinery problems are not giving correct answers it is not working steam turbine and fluid machinery problems all these things we need to say like that because we are working on chat gpt for long time i will tell you there are certain subjects their trained data is not available much in the public domain for example this uh, chat gpt that is open ai company they are very ethical they are very ethical what they did even though many of the you know there are some places like pdf drive on pdf drive you can download many of the pdf books i am sure that because many many people they download they have got big repository of pdf drive books but chat gpt won't do that therefore what happens the steam turbine and fluid machinery that is hydraulic machinery books may not be available in public domain to for chat gpt so therefore the information available as a 
trained data for chat GPT to make questions will be very less, but so let us hope situations will improve. Other possibility is that the, uh, the question paper setting uh, companies, they will try, they will train their own data and uh, they will try their own, train their own data and upload. Now there is a question from Dr. S. Hema, madam. Uh, I am searching an answer for solution for a practical problem. Is it possible and does the information authenticated? See, <laughs> it is very good that you are searching an answer for solution for a practical problem. You please define the problem. You please define the problem because when you define the problem exactly, then the solution is hidden in that you know. And is it post information authenticated. So I, I am not understanding this English well, but I assume that your question is whether the answer you are getting from ChatGPT is really is really authenticated. This, if you can define the problem properly, I will tell you from my example, from my experience, 95% of the time it will be correct from ChatGPT 4. And you can always validate the answer. Validate the answer by seeing with the common sense, with the checking with a similar thing. Because ultimately it is for us, chat GPT is a faceless thing. We are only going to suffer if it is wrong. Now there is another question from Archana Mishra, madam. Uh, I am curious to know if we wish to generate a diagrammatic model on any topic while doing research. Can we like explain the process to chat GPT or give instruction or tell our order, etc. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Today, uh, I will tell you this afternoon, I was in the chemical um, uh, sciences department of Mahatma Gandhi University there we made very good quality drawings, very good quality drawings. And the, and the professor and the research scholars were very happy with the research. So my request is that please use DAL E. You will get such a good quality, such a good quality images there. Now, Dr. S. Sutha, madam, can be able to find a research gap using chat GPT? Yes, I am going to show you that one. You can do that. Now, Dr. Shweda, madam, can we use a diagram in chat GPT, sir, to avoid plagiarism? Yes. What you are getting from, it is not from chat GPT. Chat GPT may give some basic diagram, but if you want to get it proper, professional, or the best in the world, you please go to DAL E. In DAL E, you will get a, such, an, such an image. Now, Lata G, madam, how to get chat GPT, how to get chat GPT access? Madam, this is not the question which, which we have to be asking and telling here, but you please go to chat.openai.com. You will get access to chat GPT. If you are not getting, then please give me a call. Now, now why Chanti, madam, how can we prevent the students from using chat GPT for chat GPT for assignments? This is a very good question. How can we prevent students from using chat GPT for assignments? You have chat GPT, they have chat GPT. You can use chat GPT, they can use chat GPT. So there is the question. You have to make a question in such a way that such a way that students will feel it difficult to use chat GPT. So you please go to LMS, you please go to LMS. There, there is a complete document, 100 plus ways to use exciting uh, classroom. In that, the last section, please refer to that. You will find the ways so that you can get it. Okay, so there you can get it. Now, there is another question from uh, Dr. T. Devi, madam. Without seeing the patient's face, how generate AI do the surgery? when compared to traditional AI. Is it possible for solving the problem of patient's health analyzing using chat GPT? Let me read this question once again. Without seeing the patient's face, how generative AI do the surgery when compared to traditional AI? <clears throat> Is it possible for solving the problem of patient's health analyzing using 
actually madam this is not clear my request is that i know you have got a serious serious uh, question my request is that please give me a call because this is this may require some exp some more explanation i will repeat my phone number 9673670033 please call me because i am also curious to understand your question now there is another question from anju singh madam how can we prevent students from using chat gpt for assignments yeah it is the same thing please go to lms we have got a document there as part of our 100 plus uh, 100 plus exciting ways to use chat gpt you can get it because that requires about explanation we have given 10 different ways you can do that now pavana sharma madam sir i want to do a research how can I do a, uh, reach a particular topic? I am going to explain this thing now, Madam Pavana, Madam. Now, Archana Mishra, Madam. Uh, great, sir. Thank you. Okay, for clarify. Okay, okay, welcome, ma'am. Does, okay, Hidendra, sir. Does chat GPT has ability to convert formula into algorithm, flow chart, etc.? Yes, it has. Victoria Amalapova, Mary, Madam. Can we do statistical analysis with the chat GPT? Yes, Madam, we can. Dr. Shweda, madam, is there a repository in chat GPT? Oh, uh, this is not very clear, madam, but uh, I think it is possible. Now, Edward <laughs> Lepcha, sir, is there any way to know or come to the conclusion that we have asked or created the right to prompt a question? That you can see from the response from chat GPT, you can see whether it is meeting. Excellent tools for teaching learning process. Okay, Chaudhary, sir. Now, I am going to take you to another place here, another place where uh, where how to use chat GPT for chat GPT for uh, this uh, for doing research. I hope you can see this screen called Vijnana. Yes. Okay. This Vijnana is a very special AI platform where research can, researchers can, uh, can find research topics. Researchers can take their small idea spark to a high impact research. I am going to explain to you because this will answer many of the questions how to do research let me show you some of the very interesting thing this is first thing is it is a zero zero step zero zero you can get a you can get validation of your slight idea spark that means you do not know anything while taking a shower or while speaking with the friends while reading a book or while or or while watching movie you got an idea spark about a research you just come to chat gp come to vijnana where you can enter there you can enter your idea spark that is idea you got then enter which is the domain then enter what is your objective of doing this research just to give this three information you will get all other information related to that research. I am going to put a small ideas, idea spark. I, uh, I am going to write like this. Uh, sedentary, sedentary jobs lead to obesity and heart attacks is what my idea spark i want to i am putting a very neutral to, neutral topic here this and context 
I am writing medicine. Objective of my research, I am telling that uh, IT companies will be uh, forced to change their work style. This is what my objective. Information technologies companies will be forced to change their work style with my research. I am giving this three information. Now see what are the things I can get to here within seconds. I can do originality assignment of my result, originality assessment. I can find value proposition of my research. I can find application spectrum of my research. I can find research question formulation. I can do literature synopsis. I can see what are the type of hypothesis I can generate if I am going with this particular research. I can do a resource compilation. I can find what are the resources required if I have to go with this research. I can see a scale projection. Means Vijnana will tell me what are all the scales, size, level in which I can do this research. Then I can see a make a stakeholder mapping. Vijnana will tell me who are all the people who will be actually affected or interested in this particular research. I can do an impact analysis through Vijnana. Meta question, meta cognitive. Meta cognitive inquiry questions. This will be like what are the questions your guide might ask you, Vijnana will ask you. There is no need to go to your guide and get, get all type of discussions and firing from there. You can, Vijnana will give you what are the type of questions your guide is going to ask. Interdisciplinary exploration. Vijnana will give you with your this particular idea, what are the type of interdisciplinary research you can do. Then engaging pitch construction. I have seen many research scholars, they cannot explain to their friends, their family, what, what research they are doing. Vijnana will explain to you in a very dramatic, interesting way, a marketing pitch for your research. Then ethical consideration, methodological advisor. Vijnana will tell you what type of research methodology you will be following for this particular, if you are going to pursue this particular research. Then validation strategy. You know that ultimately any research, any hypothesis, it is to be validated. So what are all the validation strategy for this? Then data visualization ideas. Unless you put all your data in a in a uh, in an interesting way with all uh, all dynamic dynamic graphs or infographics this this vijnana will give you ideas for that then for a research what are the collaboration opportunities then what are probable funding strategies and what are the publication venues and with this research what type of vision or how, uh, what is the long-term visioning of this? This type of thing, about 21 details you are going to get as a validation just by using, a, uh, using an idea spark. I will show you here, sedentary jobs lead to obesity and heart attacks. This is what thing. I will just show you one particular example here. That is, I am going to assess the originality of this particular research, I am clicking originality assessment. Here the internet speed is little less so that it is taking, uh, it may take a few minutes, but, but it is worth, it is going to do the iterative result for that. You know that as a preliminary thing of a research, I asked chat GPT, I know uh, I gave Vijnana just three information. With that information, now Vijnana is going to do an originality assessment of my research idea. Now let us see what, what Vijnana is going to show. 
It is showing, please wait, iteration is in process. It is taking more time than what we uh, anticipated. Let me close this thing and start one thing. See, now you are seeing here, this is a, it is taking little more time. That's the reason I closed that previous window. This is a value proposition assessment for this particular, particular idea spark. It has given me a detailed value proposition assignment that is integration of health and corporate policy, acknowledging sedentary lifestyle as a health threat, developing a new paradigm for work style, intricate associations with the mental health potential, and it is giving the all explanations here. And in the end, it is showing important, a few pointers that can improve your research. That means Vidya is giving me that value proposition and giving me five important points to improve my research at this particular point of time. So now let me close here and, and let me go to the next uh, let me go to the next step that is identify a research topic. Now you just imagine your situation. 
you are going you are going as a new research scholar you are going as a new research scholar actually you do not have any idea which what to do as a research so this is a step one for that if you it is going to ask you what are your academic field of interest in field of interest one field of interest two field of interest three what are your passions or hobbies what are your extracurricular activities what is your current knowledge level what are your research skills all these points how much ever you can you fill then come and click here research idea suggestion with your this information given in the iteration input the vijnana will give you a list of seven to eight research ideas that you can pursue as a research so this is what the power of, of vijnana it is beyond chat gpt power of vijnana is beyond chat gpt you won't get you won't get the result what vijnana gives from chat gpt the reason i will show you in the next screen now if you can give this much information on the iteration input it will give you the research idea suggestions idea validity analysis originality verification value exploration application forecast it will forecast the application research question development literature synthesis hypothesis crafting resource mapping resource mapping scope modeling stakeholder identification impact assessment meta cognitive question interdisciplinary means what are the things normally it would have taken even two months or three months you will get it in few minutes it's a important point is without any knowledge about a research topic you by seeing this it will give you suggestion and with a research topic you can actually iterate and improve upon the research topic now let me take you to the next point the most important part of a research is the critical thinking that is thinking we know that research is a cognitive process now just to see this image here <clears throat> between the first column and second column if you see the title here it is the key of doing a very good high impact research you must apply intellectual standards to the elements of reasoning so that you develop intellectual traits intellectual traits are going to develop high impact research here you see this dotted line between these two there are about there are about 2000 ways to think please understand there are 2000 ways to think between these two and the real research is happening in this thinking it is not taught in indian system this particular thinking that is the reason we have got quantity in research no quality in research because this critical thinking process is not taught therefore in vijnana it is embedded in vijnana we have made a critical thinking engine this critical thinking engine is embedded everywhere therefore when you are asking something you are actually taking through this critical global level critical thinking engine so the main main benefit here what is going through it will take your research through this critical thinking of 2000 different ways of thinking and extract what is appropriate for you then there are many uh, generative ai related techniques are used here and you can use them for a higher high impact research now let me go to the next one it is literature review when you come to literature review on vijnana you need to give what are all the preliminary things required for required when you use for literature review so when you give a tentative research problem statement preliminary research question draft a list of keywords names or databases search engine that can be google scholar just or uh, etc scope of the review list of renowned journal whatever you can you please give you whatever possible information you give then 
will give you synthesized summary of literature. It is not, it is not throwing purpose at you. It is giving synthesized summary of literature. It does keyword analysis. It does research problem clarification. It does methodological mapping. It does theoretical conceptual framework overview. It does applied cont contextual understanding. Reference trend analysis. Historical progression mapping. We, you know that historical progression mapping, how things got changed over time. Cross-disciplinary insights. Gap identification. There was a question here whether chat, uh, whether um, chat GPT can do the gap, uh, gap identification. Here I am showing that Vijnana can do the gap identification. Evaluation of methodologies. Theoretical and conceptual framework analysis. Recommendation engine, metacognitive question, innovative study design concepts. And these all these places, when you click along with this, Vijnana gives you the research advisors. And uh, because the second part is with the Bloom's taxonomy cognitive, that is K5, K6 level, that is evaluate and, and create level, this Vijnana gives you Vijnana gives you a recommendation for your paper publication. New and original idea for paper publication. You take those paper publication ideas and go, go to Google and search such a thing will not be there. So one of the another side effect of Vijnana's powerful AI is that it will give you paper publication ideas. So where we are, it is on the literature review. Now let us go to formulating research problem. All these steps, you know that it is very time consuming and heart burning. So in the case of formulating a research problem, what are the things we need to give here at this point in a systematic way? We have to give what is the literature review. We need to see what are, what are the gaps we, uh, gaps we identified. And we can say what are the preliminary hypothesis or research question we have. This type of information, you give it on the left-hand side on the iteration input. Then after giving everything, start clicking there on the iteration output on Vijnana. Here on the first, it is output based on Bloom's taxonomy's cognitive K3 and K4 level. In the second group, it is Bloom's taxonomy cognitive K5 and K6 level. Okay, so here you will see refined research problem statement. With this information, our, uh, this Vijnana will create list of research problem statement. Then it is for the scholar to select it. Then it is for the research scholar to select it. These are all maximum high-end application of generative AI in research methodology. This is combining research methodology, critical thinking, prompting, and generative AI. This is a combination. So, there is nothing in the world like this because it is really developed by understanding the need of Indian research scholars and Indian research guides. So here you will see that gap identification in existing literature, feasibility analysis, ethical consideration evaluation, assumption challenge, interdisciplinary synergies, predictive trend analysis, research problem refinement suggestions, Contrasting perspective synthesis, bias detection and mitigation, innovative problem formulation, stakeholder implication analysis, self-reflective questions for re-evaluation. Now we have come up to formulating research problem. Now let us go the very importantly identifying variables. We exactly in the same way. When we are in identifying variables, give this information here on the left hand side on the iteration input view information here. Then you will get here on the first button a variable dictionary for the current research. It is going to list, it is a dictionary of variables. It is, it is suggesting how many variables and type of variables it is going to suggest. Then variable causal mapping, measurement instrument tools guide, operationalization techniques. You know, operationalization is very important for variables. Variable classification overview, concept variable transformations, 
measurement scale recommendation, variable sources origination list, potential variable limitation, gap analysis of variables, variable interrelationship analysis, critical evaluation of variable validity, innovative variable combination, bias and assumption detection in variables, recommendation for piloting variables, reflection on variable ethical implication, variable evolution predictions, custom instrument tool creation, feedback loops for variable refinement, theoretical implications of variables, meta analysis recommendation. These are all coming from variables. Give iteration input on the left and get the outputs on the right. Then after seeing the output, you change the input here in the iteration because that is what ultimately the research is. We are seeing the output and we see that one, whether it is according to expectation or whether we need improvement, then we change those things on the iteration. In this way, you will get all variables. Means it is like you can complete your research within two months. Your entire research will be completed. Now we are coming to the next important stage that is constructing hypothesis. You know that con uh, hypothesis construction is a major milestone in anybody's research. Similarly, on the iteration input window on the left, you give what are the information already you accumulated with from the last three stages. You give research problem and objective, literature review summary, preliminary concept and variables, decide outcome. When you give this thing here on the left, on the right hand side, you can click and get create a custom hypothesis repository. When uh, uh, some one participant was inquiring about repository, here you can develop, get a custom hypothesis repository. That is, uh, Vijnana is going to create hypothesis based on the inputs given by you. Structured templates for hypothesis, hypothesis variable mapping, hypothesis classification guide, operational definitions index, function of hypothesis overview, everything of this, you have to click it, one window will open and some time, sometimes a few minutes of thinking by chat GPT and uh, no, Vijnana and its, uh, its uh, uh, critical thinking engine, then you are going to get result for that. Gap analysis for hypothesis, hypothesis interaction analysis. Similarly, you will get the details for research design, study design, data collection methods, attitudinal scales, validity, reliability, sample selection, writing research proposal, data collection, data processing, <coughs> and how to display data, then making a research report. Everywhere you give an iteration input on the left, and you will get result on the right. Prepare, this is a very important thing, preparing for Viva OC examination. Even you can give the, you can give all your research related thing and including the examiner's background. With what background your examinations are, examiners are coming, you will get Viva preparation strategy, probable examination examiner questions, critical thinking assessment, demonstrating domain commitment, interdisciplinary research approach, addressing methodological challenge, explaining key findings, discussing research implication, handling limitation, future research pathways, articulating personal correct contribution, ethical consideration defense, integrating feedback, responding to unexpected questions, post to viva steps, stress management techniques, presentation strategies, engagement with examiners, et cetera, et cetera, peer learning and support. These are all the things from zero, zero to 18. We were following a research methodology every, every step, every step of research methodology. Everything is embedded with the generative AI, critical thinking and prompting. <coughs> this is a, this, our objective is that with this, our country's research level should go up. No researcher should get stuck anywhere. 
no guide should uh, should uh, feel that this research scholars are not working or they are not coming up to the mark because it is going to give everything your research scholar needs it is going to give everything for a guide to support that research scholar in that way it is a big thing it is it is a it's a big thing for big thing for both researchers guides institution and the community and for the country with that objective this vijnana has been developed now those now those people now those those participants they are from the states where you follow indian knowledge system i would like to show you some very interesting thing here there are three sections only for indian knowledge system i will show you this indian knowledge system this is mining the past for new knowledge means any modern concept you give here on the left hand side and click on the right hand side on the right iteration output you will get the complete indian knowledge system related to that particular thing let me show you one example i will key in here a, a concept idea or something from modern i will i am taking one modern thing i am taking cooling of smartphones cooling of smartphones you know that there are even four four gb ram computer has got a fan but my 8 gb phone doesn't have a fan then how this cooling is happening and how this is linked to ancient indian knowledge system i am going i am putting a really really challenge for that cooling of smartphones i am going for indian knowledge system i am clicking i am clicking historical context now let us see what what vijnana is going to show means how the smartphones concept is coming from our indian knowledge system or that cooling of that i hope it will come fast with the indian knowledge system vijnana does totally three things first thing is vijnana mine the past means it will go through entire indian knowledge system repository and it will unearth things related to this modern concept it will give a complete note here it is totally uh, unseen now please see this thing please see S cooling your smartphone it a uh, text uh, <coughs> cooling your smartphone see here linguistic mapping heat management agni agni niyantran in sanskrit refers to managing fire or heat energy conservation urja samvartan can be a relevant ancient term material science paumik shastra refers to understanding properties of material now please please see this concept is in rigveda it, it is in rigveda it is in manushmriti it is in shushruta samhita it is in atharva veda it is giving all references mandala 5 verse 33 and uh, and this is atharva veda hyam 11.6 chakra samhita it is showing that contextual interpretation evidence compilation synthesis of findings so here you have seen that in indian knowledge system how cooling your smartphone technology has got a relation in indian knowledge system similarly you can see philosophical insights scientific principles practical applications ethical and moral guidance these are all related to indian knowledge system here cooling your smartphones this is about the mining the past for new knowledge i can click here building a new future future with the wisdom from the past you give the same thing here one concept of modern and and uh, vijnana will show you from indian knowledge system
how new things can be uh, how new things can be built how new things can be built by using indian knowledge system that is the knowledge from the past you click here and it will go through some more than 2600 texts it will bring that correct information here it will show you how to use indian knowledge system for a better future now here the last one is interdisciplinary you can use do interdisciplinary research using we we can use interdisciplinary research using uh, vijnana with the indian knowledge system that is indian knowledge system and any modern concept you make an interdisciplinary research in that way actually act ugc and everyone is looking for such a research now with vijnana that is very easy so these are the main things here now let us now let me go back because it is a time for it is a time for uh, this thing oh, already nine o'clock already nine o'clock and uh, please let me see what are all the questions so that i will answer those questions okay there is a question from sanjoy shil sir how access the vijnana search engine I want to tell you everyone, this Vijnana has got a very high-end uh, critical thinking engine. Therefore, it is not on, it is not a web app, it is a, it's a desktop app. It's a desktop software. It is to be procured by the institution and installed on at the, at the institution. And there is a question from Pavana Sharma, madam, whether Vijnana is a free software. No, it is not free because, because uh, some more, more than 20 people spend some six months. It is not with any government support, but it is actually delivered in a very affordable way. It is not a monthly subscription. It's a perpetual license. <clears throat> there is there is a there is a whatsapp number given on this please co please contact so, so that you see on the top there is a whatsapp number you can contact on that number uh, number for vijnana details
डॉक्टर सुरेश सर यो देर द सेशन इज नॉट ओवर वी विल बी टेकिंग फ्यू क्वेश्चन प्लीज वेट आई थिंक डॉक्टर सुरेश सर इज हैविंग एन दैट ओके इश्यू uh please note everybody all these sessions will be available in the uh, uh, lms so all these sessions will be recorded and will be there in the lms okay so you can access them in the lms uh please note tomorrow's topic will be on ob for accreditation useful tool and there will be the validatory function as well and tomorrow will be the last day of the session we are just waiting if uh Dr. Suresh Nampadri will join. for lms access you need to make the payment and send the uh, a screenshot of uh, uh, the payment proof screenshot to that number mentioned and then you will get the details to the lms access in your email ओके
if you have made the payment uh, for the LMS, please, um, I've put the uh, uh, support numbers. You can call the number and check with them regarding the LMS access. Hello? 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 Uh, Dr. Suresh Namputri, can you hear me? I think you should be able to unmute because you are a co-host. Yeah, fine. Oh, oh, okay. yeah. It's you in between, and uh, and uh, I was uh, trying my plan B, and uh, so uh, so I could come back to the uh, come back to the session now. If any more questions, I can I can answer. It looks like there are no more questions. For those people who want to uh, get access to beginner, you can call that number 9025-92530 for details, or you can call Dr. Suresh number itself for details. Uh, there's one question, sir. Yeah, yeah, very okay. Uh, whether uh, created through a software like a like math type. See, whatever you can, whatever you can upload through it, whatever is you can get from a text file that can be, and whatever you can get through a CSV file, you can upload. You can upload a data set. So it is based on the data what you have. Definitely, you can use it on Vidyana and ChatGPT. Okay, now there is a question from question from Ujjwala, madam, uh, that features that ChatGPT you explained are available in the free version. Madam, this basic point is, if you want to do a serious research, you have to use ChatGPT 4, because the reasoning power which ChatGPT 3.5 is showing is not enough for any serious research. That is the reason we show ChatGPT 4, and we need to use those things for doing the higher order thinking you know that the OBE or a research everything looks for higher order thinking uh, uh, the, 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 therefore such things you can get only from chat gpt4 that is paid version you can have a department wise or you can pull some of the friends and it is worth can we use chat gpt or Pignana for reviewing the research purpose actually uh, both of them are for generating. It is not for reviewing. But you can always search and you can compare. That can be used.
Any more questions? I think there are no more questions, sir. I think we will end for the day. Yeah. And they have the they have your number as well. I've shared it out here. Yes, yes. If they have any questions, they will call let them contact you. Okay, right. Yeah. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Thank you. Suresh, thank you, Sajid. Uh, thanks yeah. for, for all participants. Yeah. All right, everybody. We will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll have the topic of OB for accreditation useful tools. And also that tomorrow will be the last day. So we have the validator function as well. Please join in on time and we will uh, uh, we will see you all tomorrow at 7 p.m. Thank you all and have a wonderful evening.